An offense is a trap from Satan to get you to fall for it that it will then encircle you. And once you open your heart up to that, you close yourself off from the Lord. Amen. You've now separated yourself from Him. And now you, the enemy's just got you in fair game. And you, the first thing you have to do to get free of an offense is forgive. Amen. Now, most people are taught in today's society, well, I will forgive when they earn it. Nobody says that, but that's how they feel. When they prove to me they're worth forgiving, then I will forgive them. Well, Jesus said that if you don't forgive others, he can't forgive you. Now, how many would like Jesus to stand up with a list beside you with everything he had against you? Does anybody want that done to you? Every time you choose to take the bait and fall into the trap of offense, that is where you put yourself back under. <clears throat> That's a rough thing, isn't it? Y'all still with me? And so you have to divide. There's a, you know, disciples are human beings like us, right? Come on. He's like, well, how many times do we have to forgive? Jesus said, oh, 70 times 7. Now, I worked with some guys at one time in my life that I told them, you, you know, that comes out to about 470 times a day. And I told them, you're on 469, and I hope you go over. <laughs> they did. <laughs> I was a human being. And for the record, I had already taken offense if that was coming out of my mouth. <laughs> and I had to deal with my heart. Come on. Because if I don't deal with my heart, then I think God, God can't. I've tied God's hands. How many would rather have God fight for you than you fight for you? Yes. I mean, His scales are even, His way is just. Yes. I just decided a long time ago I'd let Him do all the fighting for me. He does it way better than me. Amen. You know, I can be, I can even, how, how many know there's times that you have a right to be upset according to everything but the Word of God? You can be 100% right and still be 100% wrong. Because Satan doesn't care if you're right just as long as you take the offense. Right. As long as you fall for the trap. You know one of the ones he loves to get, especially new believers, is convincing that God failed them in some way and then they get offended with God. Now God's not a man that he can lie, right? Said he'd never leave him or forsake you. And if he can get you offended with God, now he's cut you off from the only one that can heal you. Yeah. Pretty slick, eh? Would you all like to look into this trap a little more this morning together? Well, good. I'll get my notes out now. I haven't even started. <laughs> I actually do have notes this morning. Matthew 24, verse 3. Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. We're going to start there and keep going on down. When they got it up on the big screen, let me know. Matthew 24, verse 3. Well, I'll start reading and they'll catch up. <laughs> and he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be a sign of thy coming at the end of the world? Now everybody wants to know when Jesus is coming back and I have said this many times throughout my ministry. Unfortunately, most people want to know when Jesus is coming back because they want to know how long they've got to get their act together. Well, if you live ready, you don't have to worry about getting ready. This is my advice to people. If you live ready, you don't have to worry about getting ready. He said, so they, you know, the ones that are living ready, they, they, there's another verse that says, occupy until I come. How many know an occupied force isn't hiding in caves? They're holding the ground and taking more ground. They're occupying an enemy territory. How many know we're not in this world, we're of this world, but God, until Jesus comes back, we're to occupy this world. He gave us all authority, so we're to be walking in authority here upon this earth. But if you get offended, you can't occupy anything. You just got your, you just became a prisoner of war. Right. Yeah. You fell for the trap. So these are the signs for the end of the world, right? 
Verse 24, Jesus answered, saying unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Now he's talking to his disciples, right? If the disciples can be deceived, are you think you're so great that you can't be? Right? So we all can be deceived. And one of the greatest ways you can be deceived is by the bait of Satan and taking offense. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. We have a bunch of people that's already done that crazy nonsense. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. So how many know, we've, in case you don't know, I'll just go ahead and clarify. I don't, uh, a day with the Lord is a thousand years. Okay? Think about that for a moment. God doesn't see time the way that we see time. A day with the Lord is a thousand years. So a hundred years is like a tick on a second on a clock, right? <laughs> Over the last hundred years, have wars increased? Yes. So as you're going down through here, Jesus could be coming back a hundred years from now or he could be coming back tomorrow. The only time I can guarantee you he's not coming back is when some guy <laughs> makes a declaration they know the day he's coming yeah. back. Because right. the Bible says no man knows the hour that he comes. Yeah. Okay, I'm just giving you some good information while I'm getting ready to preach. So, and we're establishing, we're going to establish here that we're living in the last days. And when you're living in the last days, there are certain things that the enemy is going to do. And you need to be aware of that. Y'all still here? So you're going to hear rumors of wars. And he says, be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet. So, you know, a lot of people don't get... They, how many know working you up because Jesus is coming and putting fear into you isn't truly saving you? Because Jesus, is that faith is the opposite of fear. And when you have faith in who God is, it relieves you from all of that fear. The reason why people have fear is because they're not ready to meet Him. So, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. If you're following the news, which I don't follow much news, but if you follow things going around the world, earthquakes have increased almost a thousand fold over the last 20 years. We've had famines, pestilence. We've had all of these things. Now, he could come tomorrow or he could come quite a ways on down the road. I'm just going to live ready. But we can see the signs that he is coming soon. Y'all seeing this? And these are the beginning of sorrows. So whenever all that finally comes to completion, the beginning of sorrows, there's going to be some, uh, there's going to be the time of tribulation. And that's a whole other message. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Now we're in the tribulation. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Don't be caught here during the tribulation. You can get saved, but the only way you're living getting out of here is if you get killed. You want to be on the first ride out. I'm not trying to put fear in anybody. I'm just educating you. Okay? And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. In the last days, many will be offended. Come on, it says it right there. You know, as we've been talking to people out there, I only had a few that were something else, but first, most people were shocked. And then they're like, what do you mean people are actually talking? Because they weren't used to somebody walking in love with them. But today... Did you notice that anything you say or do offends everybody around you? Yes. You, you everybody can have an opinion, especially if you're Christian. <laughs> That's a whole other story. <laughs> but anything you do can be offended. Or someone will be offended with you. Someone may be offended by the clothes I'm wearing today. They could have been offended by the music today. As pastors, there's always somebody offended every service. It's too cold. It's too hot. The music was too loud. This wasn't right. I'm like, your heart is showing. 
I don't always say that. Sometimes I realize they're at a dangerous place and I just walk in love with them. <laughs> Big smile. <laughs> Might want to get the car ready today. I can tell. <laughs> so, if you can, he said, we started off with the disciples being deceived, and then we did, in the last days, and many are offended. So, does that mean that you are so holy that you cannot be offended? Or do you think that's something that you should be on guard for in your own life? Now, I'm going to go ahead and break it down to you're going to get offended and I'm going to teach you how to deal with it. The, the trick is learning to recognize it fast and get it under the blood. And forgive. Okay? If you don't, it's going to open up something in you. You ready to move on real fast? We've got a lot of scripture to cover. So go on down, verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Just listen to all the people telling you that you can live however you want. You're going to make heaven. They're all going to have a special place in hell. You really don't want to catch that train. I know I'm being real blunt this morning. But I want you to make heaven. I want you to enjoy the good life now. John 10.10, 10, come on, I've been preaching about it last week. It's the Zoe kind of life, the joy-filled life. How many like? How many could do with some more joy in your life? Yeah. That's what Jesus came for. You know, hope is calmly anticipating the promises of God are yes and amen. In a world that's upside down, how many like sure things? Well, the Bible's sure things. We can surely have all these things. Amen? So, and then we go on, and because iniquity shall abound, iniquity is bondage. Iniquity is when people of God know what they're supposed to be doing, but they do what they want to do anyways. And then that puts them in bondage. One of the quickest ways to get in bondage is guess what? That bait of Satan, which is offense. And then what happens to them? The love of many shall wax cold. Did it say that they will never have love? Did it say they won't have? These are people who were passionate and in love with God, who had everything they ever wanted, and now all of a sudden they wax cold. They, they somebody slowly turned down the burner on them till they didn't even realize it, and they become a bunch of religious hard nuts. Come on. But it didn't happen overnight. But one of the ways is because they were right and they did what they thought was right in their own eyes. But it doesn't always start being that blatant. One of the ways it starts is by the bait of Satan and being offended. But you don't blah, blah, blah. You know, when you've got to tell me your story, I can already tell you you're offended. <laughs> just, I'm just saying well, you don't know, Pastor. I don't, but I'm sure you're going to tell. Me. <laughs> oh my! But he that shall endure to the end shall be saved. If you're still here after the tribulation, you're going to have to endure to the end. Just don't be here. But if you're here and you made that stupid mistake, you hear this old preacher's words, if you want to make heaven, you're going to have to endure to the end. But just don't be that guy or girl. Right. <laughs> and the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness to all nations and then shall come the end. Uh, I think there's only one or two tribes that have never had contact. We're almost there. So what do you do with the fences? Luke 17, 1. Luke 17, 1. Luke 17, 1. Go there with me. What do you do with the fences? Then he said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. So it is impossible that offenses will come. They're going to come. As your pastor, I promise you if you hang around me long enough, I will never intentionally offend you, but I promise you, you will eventually get offended with me because that is the bait of Satan. 
there will be something that will take you off and you'll have to decide what you're going to do with it I'm just going to go ahead and tell you what to do with it now and jump ahead of it how many how many if you were being honest if it's your work you, you, you deal with offense on a weekly basis I've seen people that can't even drive down the highway would get offended. You be sure to cut me off. <laughs> you just took the bait of Satan, and now your love's waxing cold. You're getting the tax from the Lord, and all that joy and hope you just had. That was a great service, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> And the enemy just see us going, well, you know what they did? Do you know what? I've had people really do me wrong in my life, unfortunately. As a man of God, I've had lots of things happen. I can't always change what people do, but I can change how I respond to it. I can act like Jesus. Do you know sometimes, though, I need help? There's been times in my life I've had to tell Jesus, I don't know how to love like that. You're going to have to help me. I still want to strangle him. I know none of you, I know it must be my background I came from none of you are <laughs> like me none of you have ever felt that way I know horrible I had somebody tell me Pastor you use drastic things I'm like, well, where I came from what do you expect <laughs> But I really have. And so if you don't know, it's okay to go to him and say, I don't know how to love like that. How many know he's perfected love? And if you go to him, I promise you, he will help teach you because that's who he is. That's one of his attributes. It's not something he does. It's who he is. He's love. And so the more you've got him coursing through your veins, the more you have love flowing through you. Come on, are you hearing me this morning? You know, it says over in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Behold, you're a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You've got a new DNA. Your DNA is love. Don't fall for the bait of Satan and fall back into that flesh trap where you're reacting in a way that you shouldn't be. You are going to get offended. I hate to break it to you. But you can learn to quickly repent and get back under the blood and get that DNA flowing so it does not affect your life in a detrimental way. I dealt with people that was, I, I was a married couple one time that I loved dearly, and I thought they had it all together. As a young minister, one day he came to me. I didn't know what to do. Pastor Billy had to come help me. They just started having an all out blowout right there in the foyer over something that happened 45 years ago. And they were still offended with each other. I was, I'll be honest, I, I was not the pastor. I was in shock. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> well, we took them to the office and we had communion with them. And they, we put it under the blood. And they had communion with each other. And they were perfectly fine. They're in heaven now. 45 years. <laughs> offended. They were like, we've got a new marriage. I'm like, yeah, you can have that 45 years ago. <laughs> You've been coming to church all this time. Going through the motions. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. So, where was I? Endure until the end, the gospel to end to come. Oh, Luke 17, 1. Then he said unto the disciples, and the apostle that offenses will come, but woe unto him, through who they come. Okay, we're switching gears. For one, he's telling you, whoa, they're going to come. Then he's saying, through who they come. Why? You're going to go on down here and you're going to see where he's talking about babies in the Lord. How many know baby Christians don't know how they're supposed to act? Right. If you've not been in church very long, you've not been serving God very long, if you've not been around them, they do all kinds of stuff. Right. Yeah. Well, how many know you should make sure that you at least got your act together that you're not being a stumbling block to them. Amen. They're going to offend you all the time, I promise you, and I have the stuff they do. You just need to make sure you're not causing them to be a stumbling block and setting a trap up for them because the Bible says you're supposed to be mature enough to know how to do that. Amen. That's what we're going to read here, right? Amen. And so... 
because it goes on, it says, uh, so but woe them for who they come. So he's like, you better pay attention if you're giving them, you're going to get in trouble. It were better for them that a millstone were hanging about his neck and cast into the sea that he should offend one of these little ones. Uh, you think I'm graphic? I'm like some of you have never read the Bible. I can tell. Throw a millstone. I mean, that thing's like four foot, uh, four foot wide at the least. You know, two foot tall. Got a circle in the middle. Put a chain around and throw you in the sea. What's going to happen? It's going to choke the life out of you until there's no life and it's going to keep you bound forever. That's what a trap does. We're to give no offense and take no offense. But offenses will come. Quit acting like they're not going to show up. Because if you ain't careful, your heart will show. Big smile. Some of you are like, I didn't come for this today. <laughs> Would you rather me leave you bound up? Come on. I promise you, God, I question God when he had me preach this message today. And I knew some people would think I was just preaching it. I promise you, and if he's had me preach this, everybody in here is dealing with this in one way, shape, or form today. Maybe it's with God. Maybe it's each other. Maybe it's with your spouse. Maybe it's with when something happened. I don't know. I'm not the Holy Ghost. That's his job. He's already talking to you. I'm just telling you to get rid of it because it's like a millstone around your neck and it's going to choke the life right out of you. Right? How many like to be free? We sung about it all this morning. There's another old song I'm telling my age. It said, this is how it feels to be free. I like freedom. I like being free. I like being happy. I don't like to be... A, have you ever done that? Uh, well, I guess... All right, I'll do it. Have you anybody ever seen a caged animal? When you first cage a wild animal, they are not a happy creature. They're snarling, mad, angry, hurt. If that's you, you are a caged animal. You fell into the trap of the fence. And everybody that tries to help you is going to get their hand bent. Because that's what wild animals do when they get caged. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. I don't know why I'm responding that way. Well, your heart's all jacked up and you're offended. You're in a trap and you need to get out. Some of you really need that big smile today. I need Brother Todd's smiley face. <laughs> He's probably watching. <laughs> Take heed to yourselves, verse 3, 17, 3, Luke 17, 3. Take heed to yourselves if thy brother trespass against thee. Did he say the hoodlum down the street? Did he say that drunk guy? Or, no, he said your brother. That's the one you know serving with you that's supposed to love Jesus just as much as you do. He didn't say, he, he didn't say, he said, if they trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. So he did something wrong. You dealt with it. You walk in love. You forgive each other. And then what do you do? Yeah, move on. Because if Jesus cast it as far as the east as the west will never be remembered again, what should you do with it? Cast it as far as the east is from the west to never be remembered again. If it's washed in the blood, can you remember it? Should you remember it? You want to know how you get rid of offenses? You forgive them and you wash it in the blood and you forget about it. And if you're still having trouble with some things, Hebrews 9.14 says He'll purge your very consciousness for His sake. For guys like me, I did have some stuff in my conscience that Denny would always bring up. Well, who do you think you are? Don't you remember you did such and such and such and such? Come on, I'm preaching this morning. Some of you need to write that verse down. Hebrews 9, 14. And then I started praying that, and guess what God did? He came and purged my consciousness. 
Burge means to completely eliminate. You mean you can't remember that? Absolutely, and I'm not trying to either. Does he try to flick a little bit up yet? But I just put the blood on it and I keep walking. Yeah. It's purged. Yeah. Do you know there was a season in my life that I was offended with myself? I'm just going to tell you, I was in a trap about a trap because who I was, who I once been. Well, you blew it. You're never going to be good enough. You're never going to be who God called you to be. You might as well hang it up. I know that seems hard to believe now, but that's I, I, I fell into all of that at one time. I had to forgive myself. Wash myself in the blood. I know that sounds crazy, but there was a season of my, and I believe every true believer has went through that or going to go through that. But you also got to learn to forgive those around you and quit holding people's wrongs. If you don't... Do you want somebody doing that to you? Most of all, do you want Jesus doing that to you? You can be 100% right and still be 100% wrong. So we got to forgive him in verse 4. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive them. Even if they continue to be a little turd all day long and just push all your buttons and each time you confront them, they go, I'm sorry. You don't know that was your last chance, buddy. <laughs> it's over. I'm done with you. Do you want to hear Jesus say, I'm done with you? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Because if you don't forgive, you're going to be in that pile. And that is where offense will take you. Because your love will wax cold. Because it will cut you off from everything that brings you joy, happiness, and peace, peace in this world who is Jesus Christ. It's not worth it, friend. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. So, 70 times 7, like 470. So, you know, like I said, I counted some for some guys one time. They literally were 460. You know what it takes to get to 469 times in a day? <laughs> Acts 24, 16. Acts 24, 16. Just in case some of you need some more scripture for this so you don't think I'm cherry picking here. <laughs> Acts 24, 16. Do we have it up on the big screen yet? Acts 24, 16. It says, And herein do I exercise myself to always have a conscience. How many know the battle starts in your mind? Do you want, I want to tell you a big secret. Are you ready? Huge secret. You can't stay mad if you don't remember it. <laughs> it's a deep isn't it you can't stay mad if you don't remember it do you know you have to rehearse it to stay mad you've got to replay it over and over and over and the enemy will have it on rerun why ring 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 I mean he just loves to pump up that he loves the works of the flesh oh they're almost in anger oh wow, they're thinking murderous thoughts <laughs> yeah rewind rewind Philippians 4 8 says, Take every, th no, that, that, every thought captive that exalts itself above the mind of Christ. Philippians 4 8 says, Think on these things. Whatever things are lovely, whether things are pure, whether things are just, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So you have to take every thought captive. Thoughts are going to come. You know, it's the shield of faith that quenches the fiery darts of the enemy. And I believe those darts are thoughts. One of those thoughts is the greatest bait he's ever made, and that's an offense. Because an offense convinces you to be upset about something you have the right to be upset about, but it gets you to walk in the wrong heart about it. And so, not always. Some, I've seen people get offended over some stuff they had no reason to be offended over, but they took the bait. You still with me? Yeah. So always have a conscious, what? Is it up there now? Yeah. Void of what? 
Void of offense. Are we seeing this this morning? Your conscience should be always void of offense. It, we see in the last days it's going to come. Everybody's going to be offended. It's something everybody's going to deal with. But your conscience should be void of offense. Towards who? What I start off with. Some people, that can, and I understand it. Has anybody, God's ways are our ways. Has anybody prayed for something that didn't go the way your faith expected it to go? And if you're being honest, God, the enemy tried to then get you offended towards God. And then all that did was separate you to the only peace and joy you had that was helping you make through that thing. Come on, I'm preaching the truth this morning. So void of offense towards God. So you can be offended towards God. And then he said void of offense towards men. Did it say just good men? It just said men. By the way, that covers men and women. Now, if you want to break that down to the Greek, that's everybody. <laughs> You can't not be offended in this world and contain and keep your joy and peace. They're opposite. Today, I want to see everybody in here walk out of here with a bucket full of joy and peace. I want to see people walk out of here back in the right standing with God and some people that chose to get out of the trap of offense. You know, you can tell when people are offended. For one, you know, that they don't know it, but their face is telling everybody usually. <laughs> Bless God. <laughs> no, they don't even say that. <laughs> Moving along, some of you are like, <laughs> tough crowd. <laughs> all right. I think I'm actually through all these pages. Can y'all believe that? Look, I got 15 minutes. Yeah, I just got a few more here on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> It's going fast, don't worry. And I've kept everybody mostly awake. <laughs> and I'm not offended when you fall asleep. <laughs> I, I fell asleep in church back when I worked 16 hour shifts. So listen, I will never be offended with something. James 4 8, James 4 8, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh, nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double minded. So, usually when people hear that, they're like, he's going to be a sinner. Oh, God's this, you know, they miss the whole part. Then when you draw nigh to God, he comes to you. And his promise is that if you if, if you come here cleaning your hands, that, that he'll purify your hearts. It's a promise. I'm so happy that anytime I come to, when I make a step towards him, he's making a step towards me. And he's wanting to clean my heart and my hands. Isn't that good news? If you could do it on yourself, if you could walk around this world without being offended in your own strength, you would have already done it. But you can't. I'm going to be honest, I don't turn the news on because I would get offended. <laughs> Oh my. But I would wash it in the blood and trust Jesus. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. says, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Do you know when you have a kingdom mindset, it changes how you deal with things in the world. The most important thing to me is people getting saved, set free, and delivered. That is what drives me. That's my passion. When I wake up every day, it's the only thing that motivates me. It's what I what I think about from the time I get up to the time. So that's good. You're pastor. I mean, way before I was pastor, that is what drove me. I had one time, I, I had a job that looked like it was in, in a question whether or not I was going to get fired. You know, you've all heard that story. I had a boss one time that told me he was going to fire me and everything at the mines, and I told him, "Well, you don't." I just read that verse about authority comes from God and all those things, and I said, "Well, you don't have the authority to do that." He's like, "Yes, I do." I said, "No, you can't. Only God, and only God allows you." He's like, "We'll see about that." And he took me to the hill, and he didn't get me fired. I had crazy faith, immature a little bit, but I had crazy faith, and God gave me favor and all those things. But someone said, "Well." 
Right? You know, there's just a time and a place to talk about God and not. And you really need to tone it down. <laughs> I said, well, that may work for you, but I don't read that in my Bible. <laughs> and if I'm going to keep my mouth shut when I'm dead. <laughs> He said, if I don't praise him and talk about him, then the rocks are going to cry out. Now, did I intentionally try to offend people? No, I did not. So set your mind on things above. If you're walking in offense, you need to start setting your minds back on kingdom things. 2 Corinthians 10.5 2 Corinthians 10.5 It's a different translation, but Demolish arguments and every pretense that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. If they don't line up with the truth of the Word, you need to just demolish it. Tear it down. Right, wrong, it don't matter. Give it to God and break it down. Come on, are you with me? Uh, Romans 12.2 Romans 12, 2. I quoted this a little bit earlier, but it's a little bit different translation. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. <laughs> that means the enemy is constantly trying to twist and pervert your mind. That's what it means to be conformed to this world. And the only way you're going to keep it transformed is by continually putting in the Word of God and the Scripture, the things of God, and thinking about those things. You know, and maybe there's some in here. We, we have people for that serve God for an hour and some people that serve God for 40 years in this room. I'm thankful for it. Do you know, I'm, I'm going to break it to you. I read the Bible through four times a year. And used to, when I'd have men of God say stuff like that, I'd be like, well, that's great for you. I'll make it through five minutes and fall asleep. <laughs> I know none of you were that way, right? I can remember the first time I read a whole chapter through. I thought I was doing something. I wanted the cheerleading team. Woo! You know, and the first time I read all the Hittites and Moabites and every other, you know, I thought, man, I am doing something. I don't know what none of that means, but I'm doing it. <laughs> I, this is the dumbest thing. I don't know why you put that in the Bible, God. I know none of you have been there. The point is, I didn't start off that way. And some of you have heard me say this. I'm going to say it again. When I first started reading my Bible through like that, it was like eating dry crackers with no water. It was hard. And all of a sudden, one day, I kept putting it in, and all of a sudden, it was like a light switch came on. To this very day now, it's my man, it's my food. It's more important to me than my breakfast. If I don't have the, my time alone with God, then you don't want time alone with me. <laughs> because I've got to renew my mind every day. These last days that we're living in, it takes more and more renewing of the world, but the mind, because the world is so dark around us. But how many of God's called you to be a thermostat? Not a thermometer. That means you change your environment. Your environment doesn't change you. Amen. But you'll never do that if you don't start spending time with God. But the number one thing I wanted to warn you about today, because we're living in the last days. Many people are offended. Many believers are offended. But if you're offended, you've cut yourself off from the things of God and the very tools that you need to make it through. And I just came to warn you today about Satan's number one trick is the bait of Satan, which is offense. There's people here today that's got offended with God. You're going to have to forgive Him and wash Him in the blood. There's people in here that some of you got brought up stuff from 40 years ago that you need to get washed in the blood. Come on. 